हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम रुद्राक्ष एंड मैन वेलकम टू माय चैनल जेएमबी रुद्राक्ष साइंस क्लासेस सो फ्रेंड्स इन टुडेस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द ज्योग्राफी चैप्टर ऑफ क्लास 8 व्हिच इज द रिसोर्सेज सो आई विल स्टार्ट द चैप्टर रिसोर्सेज सो आवर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वुड बी व्हाट इज अ रिसोर्स सो एनीथिंग व्हिच फुलफिल्स ह्यूमन नीड्स इज कॉल्ड अ रिसोर्स सो रिसोर्स इज एनीथिंग व्हिच फुलफिल्स ह्यूमंस नीड्स there are basically three types of resources these are first is your natural resource second human resource and third human made resource so first we'll talk about the natural resources natural resources are the resources which are taken or deprived from nature for variety of purposes so if the question comes what the natural resources you will write natural sources are obtained from the nature so things that are obtained from the nature are known as the natural sources and the example of the natural resources would be your air soil plants etc and the natural sources are further classified into different categories these are first is your biotic and abiotic natural resources second is your ubiquitous and localized natural resources third is your renewable and non renewable natural resources and fourth is your actual and potential natural resources first we'll talk about the biotic and abiotic resources so first is your biotic resource biotic resources are the resources that are deprived uh, that are derived from living things so if the question comes that what are biotic resources you will write the resources that are obtained from the living things so uh, sources obtained from the living things are known as the biotic resources and examples are wood crops meat leather and medicines from plants and animals how i tell it to you as we know that wood is obtained from the bark of the tree and crops obtained from the plant meat and leather from the animal and medicines are obtained from the plants and animals and all these things are uh, like derived from the living things so that's why all these examples are the examples of biotic resources next is your abiotic resources abiotic resources are those resources that are derived from non living things so if the question comes that what are abiotic resources you will write the resources obtained from non living things as simple as that and examples of the abiotic resources will be minerals rock sand clay water and air as we know that minerals rock sand clay water and air are abiotic resources as as they are not as they are not taken from the living things they are taken from the non living things so that's why they are abiotic resources as you can see in the figure in the like the picture of biotic factors there is fungi plants protists animals archaea and bacteria and a in abiotic resources you can see air salinity and the soil temperature light water minerals ph and humidity so all these uh, examples are your abiotic factors and all these examples are your biotic factors so this was our first natural source uh, first category of the natural source which is biotic and abiotic natural sources next is your ubiquitous and localized natural resources so we'll now discuss about the ubiquitous and localized natural resources so the ubiquitous resources are those resources that are found everywhere for example air water land and sunlight so if the question comes that what are ubiquitous resources you write ubiquitous resources are the resources that are found everywhere and as we know that air water land and sunlight is found everywhere so that's why it is a ubiquitous resource next is your localized resource localized resources are the resources that are found in a specific places so if the question comes that what are your localized resources you will write sources found in a specific place so resources found in a specific place would be your localized resources examples of the localized resources are petroleum coal and minerals 
As we know that petroleum, coal, and minerals are found in a specific parts of the country, not a country, whole world. They are found at a specific regions, so that's why it is a localized resource. So as you can see that air is a ubiquitous resource that because it is found everywhere, and the copper is found at some places, so that's why it is a localized resource. So as you can see from the figure. Next. So now we'll take the third category of the natural resources, which is renewable and non-renewable resources. So this is our third category. So renewable and non-renewable resources. Renewable resources are the resources that can be regenerated after use in a relatively short span of time, such as the solar energy, air, and water. Plants, animals, and human beings are also renewable sources. So, if the question comes, what are renewable sources? Straight away, you will write that renewable sources are the resources which can be regenerated after use in a short span of time. So, the substances or the resources that can be regenerated in a short span of time are known as the renewable sources. For example, solar energy, tidal energy. Air energy, wind energy, water energy, plants, animals, and human beings, all these resources are your renewable resources because they can be renewed in a short span of time. Next is your non-renewable resources. So resources that take millions of years to regenerate and do not reappear during the lifespan of human beings are known as non-renewable sources. So if the question comes that what are non-renewable resources you will write the resources that take millions of years to regenerate and do not reappear during the lifespan of human beings so this is the definition of your non-renewable resources as we know that once the coal or the petroleum or the natural gas they are depleted sorry they are like finished from the earth they will take millions of years to regenerate and this regeneration can pass with the earth can be done in the lifespan of a human being. So that's why it is a non-renewable resources. So because of this reason only, we should use them wisely so that uh, non-renewable sources are also left for the future generations. So we should use these resources wisely so that our future generations can also use these resources. So uh, as you can see in the picture, in renewable resources, there is solar energy, water, wind energy, and you can also write the tidal energy, and etc. And in non-renewable sources, uh, phosphate, oil, and limestone are examples of the non-renewable resources. So, our next category or the fourth category of the natural resources are actual and potential resources. So, our next uh, category would be actual and potential resources. So the actual resources are the resources whose location and quantity are known and we have the technology to exploit them. Examples are de mineral deposits of the Chota Nagpur Plateau. So if the question comes that what are your actual resources, you will write that the uh, actual resources are those resources whose location and quantity are known to us and we have the technology to exploit them exploit them to means to extract them and examples are the mineral deposits of Chota Nagpur Plateau they are actual resources because we know about the mineral deposits of Chota Nagpur Plateau and we can also extract them from the Chota Nagpur Plateau so that's why it is an actual resource next is your potential resource potential resources are those resources which are known to us, but we do not have sufficient knowledge or the technology to exploit them. So, if the question comes that what are potential resources, you write resources which are known to us, but we don't have sufficient knowledge and technology to exploit them. It means that the resources are known to us, but we don't have a technology to extract them. For example, minerals located under the thick ice cover of Antarctica. As we know that it is very difficult to travel to Antarctica, so it is also very difficult to extract the minerals find, uh, like present under the Antarctica. So, your coal would be 
an actual resource not the coal the coal present in the chota nagpur plateau and any region uh, in uh, any region from which we today exploit the resources is your actual resource and the minerals under thick ice cover of the antarctica will be your potential resource because we know them but we don't have the sufficient technology to exploit them i hope you liked my video please like share and subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon to get notifications of my future video thank you